One of the reasons I really like the derivative, and the derivative you'll remember gives us the slope of the tangent line, is that tangent lines are nearby to a point a pretty good approximation a lot of the time. Indeed, uh, let's look over here. I, I've got the graph of sine of x. And what I've computed for you is the slope of its tangent line at x equal to zero. So I've got some particular line and I computed this by the derivative of sine of x. And you can sort of intuitively see here that, that right near zero, sine and its tangent line are like right on top of each other. But, but far away, like over here, sine and the tangent line have nothing to do with each other. It's quite dependent on the fact that the tangent line is a tangent line at one point. And near that one point where I put my tangent line, it's a pretty good approximation. Far away, it absolutely does not appear to be. I'm going to do sort of imagine, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. So I've now narrowed my window. Now it's only minus one to one here. And you'll, you'll notice that it looks good for longer. Okay, let me zoom in again. Minus one to one is what I have right now. Now I'm going to go minus 0.2 to 0.2. And I don't even know if you can resolve this on your screen. The, the red and the green, the sine and its tangent line are basically on top of each other as I zoom in on that window. So if I zoom in close enough, the tangent line and the original function here appear to be almost interchangeable. It's a really, really good approximation, at least in the case of this function, sine of x. Let's do one more example. Here I have the function square root of x, and then I've taken the linear approximation, this tangent line stands for line here, and I've done it at the value of x equal to one. So I've got this tangent line here, and again, it looks like a pretty good approximation at the value of one, and we could zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, until we had them basically exactly on top of each other. But sure, it looks like a good approximation. Now, the reason why I chose one is I know what the square root of one is. The square root of one is just one. I can do that pretty easily. And indeed, we could plug in the one here and we could get out the value of one. But you know what I don't know how to do in my head? The square root of not one, but 1.5. I know it's 1.5 is my input. It comes over to here. There's some value of square root 1.5. I could probably guess that it's in this region, but I don't know exactly what it is. I don't know what this number is. Maybe it's got an infinite decimal, decimal expansion. So how should we compute this? How does the computer even compute the square root of 1.5? One thing that I could do as an approximation is if I look at this tangent line, remember this tangent line was a tangent line at one. It's not the tangent line at 1.5. 1 1.5 is a little ways away. So if I go over to 1.5, you can see that there's the green, that's my square root of x, and that there's the red, that's my line, and they're pretty close, but they're not exactly the same, but it's a good approximation, right? The, the height here on my tangent line of 1.5 and the square root of 1.5, they're pretty close. So I could do an investigation of that. I could ask, the, at 1.5, what is not square root of x, but this line, this tangent line of one, I could ask what is L of 1.5? And yeah, they're a little different, but, but the error here, the difference, this little extra height here, it's, it's really small. So our heuristic is this. When I'm trying to estimate something like the square root of 1.5, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compute the tangent line, not at 1.5, but at a number I can actually compute. I know how to do the square root of one. And then I'm gonna try to figure out what that tangent line is, I'm gonna go along the line over to the 1.5, and that value is not gonna be exact, but it's gonna be pretty good. Another way to think about this is to say that the square root of 1.5 is whatever the, the line is at 1.5, whatever my tangent line is 1.5, plus this small little error. In this case where the tangent line is above the square root of x, the small error is a small negative number. So it's that the green is a little bit less than the red. And another way I can say it is if my error truly is small, and I haven't justified outside of this graphical picture why it's small, but if it truly is small, then I'd be able to say that the square root of 1.5 is approximately the same thing as the tangent line computed at the point one, but evaluated over here at 1.5. So let's try to figure out what is this tangent line. So that's our goal. The square root of 1.5 is the tangent line at one, but evaluated at 1.5. And I'm gonna remind you first, the general formula for a line. So any line at all, tangent line, secant line, any line you choose, is gonna have your y and your x as your variables, your y naught and your x naught as two starting points, 
And then your m here is as the slope. This is so-called the point-slope formula for a line. Sometimes people take this y naught and the m times x naught and they put it all over the right, and then it's y equals mx plus b, where b is the y-intercept. You can do that form, and that's the slope y-intercept form, but I generally prefer the slope point form because I usually know two points, an x naught and a y naught. So let's try to do this for our scenario. We want to figure out the m. The m is the slope, and the slope is given by the derivative. So what's what I need to do? Derivative of square root of x. Easy enough. The only sort of weird trickery is to note that square root of x is really x to the power of 1 half. And I like it better in the form x to the 1 half because then I can apply the power rule. x to the 1 half, I apply the power rule here. The 1 half comes out the front. x to the 1 half minus 1 is x to the minus 1 half. That's why I have x to the minus 1 half. And x to the minus 1 half, you don't have to do this, but it's nice to rewrite it. The minus sign means it's x to the half but on the bottom, and x to the half is square root, so 1 over 2 square root of x. So there we go, we've got what our slope is for all values of x, and in particular, what we're interested in is the point x equal to 1. x equal to 1 means square root of x, the y naught here is also equal to 1. Plugging 1 into here, I'm going to have half. And therefore, taking all of this into my general formula for a line, what I get is going to be y minus 1, that's the square root of 1, is equal to 1 half, that's the slope here, evaluated x equal to 1, x minus, well, x naught is just equal to 1. And so this is going to be my tangent line. And then if I actually want to write it as a line, y equals something, I'll take this minus 1, I'll move that over to the other side, and what I get is lx is equal to the mx plus b form, the slope intercept form, 1 half x plus a half. This, by the way, when I was doing my graphing beforehand, I figured out this particular equation first, and that's how I was able to draw the tangent line going on top of the square root of x. Now, we've got L of x for all values of x, but remember what our goal is. Our goal was the square root of 1.5 is about L at 1.5. So let's get rid of our calculations. I've got this L of x, and what I want to do is figure out L of 1.5. And I can plug in 1.5, so this is going to be 3 halves divided by 2 is 3 quarters, 3 quarters and a half is 1.25. So that's my claim. My claim is that square root of 1.5 is about, not exactly, but about 1.25. Now, I'm going to actually go on the calculator here and spit out exactly what the number is, at least at two decimal places. I could compute that the square root of 1.5 according to my calculator is 1.22. Not so bad. 1.25, 1.22, they're close, they're only a little bit away. Indeed, if I go back to my original, I have the square root of 1.5, that was the green here, which the calculator tells me is 1.22. But by our approximation, what we can see is that 1.25, that is what my uh, tangent line at the value of 1.5 is going to be. It's 1.25 and it's a pretty close number, not so bad. So in summary, the grand linear approximation formula is but if I'm trying to approximate f of x, where x is near some other value, in the previous example we were looking at square root of 1.5 by comparing it to square root of 1, then what the formula tells me is I'm going to go and take the function value at a at this approximating point, plus the slope, the f prime, times the distance between them, this x minus a. Indeed, this formula and the formula that we had for a line, they're really just the same different thing. I just sort of have to match them up. y is equal to f of x, that's my formula. Then a is some particular point that I'm doing it in, and f of a is just whatever the height is, so that's the y naught. And then f prime of a, that's our derivative, so that's our slope m. And x minus a, x minus x naught, just different terminology for the same thing. So, I typically like to use this terminology when I'm talking about linear approximations. I've got my function, I've got my derivative, but I do remember the general formula for a line y minus y naught is mx minus x naught. Either way, it's the same idea. It's approximating by a line, and this linear approximation formula is just the equation of the tangent line at the point A, but evaluated, this formula is evaluated at the point x.